This episode of Video Gamers Oasis Play Theater is brought to you by Tube Buddy, YouTube certified. Stop wasting time. Tube Buddy is a free browser extension that integrates directly into YouTube to help you run your channel with ease. Trusted by more than 1 million plus amazing YouTubers. Type in your browser https colon forward slash forward slash triple w dot tube buddy dot com forward slash v g o Hey gamers, welcome back to my gaming channel, Video Gamers Oasis Play Theater. I'm your host, Amit Geek, back again with our Ben Jordan Paranormal Investigator, case number six, Scourges. Let's continue with our adventure we left off. We just uh, finished with uh, Minotaur Island, done with the Labyrinth. Let's continue where we left off for Egea Anna. And um, where's our map here? Oh, there's a map. So we. We've drawn a map of the sea people there, based on the Minotaur's labyrinth. You copy the map from the mosaic in the labyrinth. It'll come in handy for tracking down the sea people's lair. It feels like standard paper from your notepad. Let's see the progress, and let's talk to one the fishermen and see if he can help us. Here, show him the, uh, the map. You knock on the door. Paracalo paramedi in elipto. Oh, it's you. Come in. All right. How can I help you? Let's give a map, see if you can read it. I knew it's kind of a crude drawing, but does anything on this map look familiar to you? Hmm, this island over here is Oracle Island. This one over here is, is the land, island with the labyrinth. The land at the bottom is Akehana. Yes, I can read this map. Can you find the location of this X? Sure, what is it? Well, if an old mosaic inside the labyrinth can be trusted, this shows the location of the Sea People's Lair. Ah, uh, well, you let me know when you want to go there. Alright, see the progress. Fisherman, let's uh, go there. Let's go there. Can I ask you some... Can I ask you some questions? This is what you came here for, so go ahead. Sailing. I'm ready to go sailing again. Good. I can hear the sea calling me. Let's head on out to find the, the Sea People's Lair. Hey, Captain. What is it? That's a question. I wanted to ask you a few things. I'm listening. Chart a course. I think it's time we plot a course. Excellent idea. Where do you want to go? Lair of the Sea People. How, how about we check out the uh, Sea People's Lair? You got it. Oh. Here we are. This is roughly the location you showed me on the map. There's nothing here. But then I guess it was pretty stupid of me to expect anything above the surface. So what are you going to do now? I don't suppose we have any diving equipment? Sorry, boss. I don't. Do you know if anyone back at the village does? Don't think so. Nobody at Gehanna is interested in diving. Well, then I guess there isn't much else I can do right now. I'll have to figure out some way to get down there. It's getting late. You want to go back to Gehanna? Yeah, we better. I don't want to be late for dinner with Professor Sandworm. Okay, I'll take his back. Here we are. We made it. Oh, there's Simon. Ben! 
Oh, hi, Simon. Where have you all been all day? Alice and I have been looking for you. I went out exploring. I'm looking into these things called the sea people. What? Yeah, there's these things in the sea that come out and drag people down. They've been disturbing something and are supposedly taking people from the village. I don't believe this. I know, pretty crazy, huh? No, I mean, I don't believe you. This was supposed to be our holiday, and you're going around working on a case. Is that the real reason you brought us here? Well, not entirely. I mean, we were going to be able to get to Athens, and that lady told me about Agiana and the sea people, and... Uh, so you brought us out here on the false pretenses in order to look into it. I see. They weren't false pretenses. What are you making such a big deal out of this anyway? I thought you'd like being a paranormal investigator. I do like it. What I don't like is not is not getting to enjoy my holiday because of a crazy story you got from some random nutter in an airport. Well, sorry I ruined your vacation. It's not like I asked you to help investigate or anything. Don't be so dramatic, Ben. I'm not the one who's being dra overly dramatic here. Look, just forget about it. I have a date tonight. Have fun swimming around with your sea people. Oh, he sounds pissed. Let's see the progress. Camper. It's one of the two campers enjoying a night by the sea. A small campfire is crackling cheerfully on the beach. Let's talk to this gentleman. <coughs> hey, listen, I, I don't want to alarm you, but there's these things in the sea that might come out each tonight. The campers say nothing. They seem to be too drunk to care. We better go back to town now. Look at this area. It's a large sign from top from top to bottom. It reads "Summer enjoys here." Sorry, Mechanos. Peachy, peachy by the pool. Cool restaurant. Sign reads Club Agiana, Camping Bungalows. This leads you to the logical deduction that this must be a camping area of some sort. A large peach colored building stands silently in the Greek moonlight. This must be the much advertised Peachy Peachy by the pool. No desire to enter the campsite. Music alone is enough to drive you away. Something here, yes. Let's go find Professor Sandboard somewhere else.
restaurant for pizza. Ah, Mr. Jordan, over here. Let's go sit. <clears throat> Hi, Professor Sandborn. Good evening, Mr. Jordan. I'm glad you made it. Is something the matter? You look a bit upset. Oh, it's nothing. I just had a stupid argument with my friend. May I be so bold as to inquire about the nature of this argument? He got mad at me because I didn't mention that I came here looking for the sea people. Ah, I see. Well, I'm sure you two will make amends. Yeah, I hope so. Now then, Miss Jordan, I'd like to know more about your past cases. And I'd like to know more about your experiences, too. Well then, we can trade stories. Tell me, what made you decide to become a paranormal investigator? Tell about uh, horror movies, tell about the woods, tell about Grandpa Arthur. Grandpa Arthur. Uh, if I had to have a, be a result of my listening to my grandfather's stories. He spent a lot of time traveling Europe when he was young, and he learned about local legends and stuff. In fact, he was the only one in my family who encountered, who encouraged my interest in the paranormal. He sounds like a remarkable man. Yeah, I really, he really was. I miss him. But enough about me for now. Uh, let's talk about the sea people. How exactly did you hear about the sea people? A colleague of mine in the theology department told me. He's, a very, he's very familiar with the Greek mythology surrounding sea creatures. I was told of a friend of, of his who had been here on a holiday recently and he heard rumors that something was coming out of the sea and taking people. So as I said, I decided to come investigate for myself. So tell me something about your first case. Ah, uh, that was when I went to the Florida Everglades to find the skunky. You started off looking into a Sasquatch? That's a rather dangerous undertaking. You don't know the half of it. Complain about the skunk king. Complain about Ranger Rick. Complain about the Everglades. Complain about Jen. Right? Jen. It turned out the skunk king was being controlled by a crazy redneck who was using it to protect his drug stash. <coughs> Good heavens, that's awful. I know, the guy was giving the skunk king cocaine and had an electronic car alarm on it. What happened in the end? Skunk game turned on him and killed him. So what happened to the creature without its master? I don't know. I assume he went back into the woods. Maybe it went to Skunk Ape rehab. Anyway, I'll stop complaining now. Paranormal investigating. What sort of experience have you had with paranormal investigating? It started out quite an early age. The house I grew up when it was haunted. No kidding, what was it like? When I was a boy, I would see an apparition in my room from time to time. It was a woman dressed in Elizabethan style clothing. She would often appear at the foot of my bed. That must have been scary. On the contrary, I was fascinated by her. I made several attempts to communicate with her, but she, was, she never responded. Years later, I found out that my former home was once the site of a gruesome murder. So the woman was the victim? No, actually she was the murderer. I reckon she was trapped there as punishment for her crime. Visited as a child by the ghost of a murderer? And you weren't scared? I'm impressed. Well, I didn't know she was a murderer as a child. Once I found out as an adult, I was scared out of my woods. That's a great story. I take it that you uh, enjoy being a paranormal investigator? Oh sure, I love it. What would you say you love most about it? World travel, meeting people, money, fame. Probably world travel. I love that I get to travel the world solving cases. It's definitely a perk of the job to be able to go anywhere if there's a paranormal activity. Yes, it is nice, isn't it? So there's something else I want to ask you. Yes, Oxford or P.A. Handbook. What made you decide to write a book for paranormal investigators? Mainly the lack of one source of research material for paranormal phenomena. 
After spending hours in libraries perusing different subjects, I decided it would help to consolidate all I learned. So also I decided it was best to write it specifically for paranormal investigators. That way you could have enough basic information but also have tips for how to deal with what you were looking, looking into. Well, I'm glad you did write it. So you've been successful in all your cases so far? Yeah, I've solved them all anyway. What do you mean? Nothing, it's just that all, it hasn't all been easy. I had to deal with some difficult stuff. Tell about Mary Blaine, tell about betrayal, tell about Alice's poisoning, tell about dreams. Dreams. I've been having these weird dreams lately, and it's really stressing me out. What sort of dreams? Last time I had all these dreams about talking to this girl in Smail Home, Mary Blaine. She told me I seriously need to consider the path I've chosen, that it wasn't going to get any easier. And just the other night, I had this dream about some guy. I don't really remember much about it, but I remember seeing it. a guy in what looked like a colonial house. Someone knocked at his door and he went up to answer it, and I felt this feeling of intense dread before I woke up. Interesting. I guess someone is trying to tell me something, but I'll be damned if I know what. But let's talk about something else less uh, depressing. Oxford. Let's talk about Oxford. You mentioned earlier today that you teach at Oxford. Yes, I'm a professor of theology. I received a doctorate in the theology and parapsychology. But rather than work extensively in the field uh, of paranormal investigator, I decided to focus on teaching. My second passion, as you may have gathered, is the study of religion. I guess the two sort of complement each other. There is a fascinating amount of mysticism in things related to the paranormal and religion. Yes. There is something I am curious about. Of all your cases so far, which have you enjoyed most? Search of the Skunk Gate, The Lost Gallon of Salt Sea, The Sources of Smail Home, Horror at Number 50, or Land of the Rise of the Dead? Probably the Horror at Number 50. The one I enjoyed the most. It's got to be my fourth case at Number 50 Berkeley Square in London. I like it best because I got to work with other paranormal investigators. Plus, that's where I met my good friends Simon and Alice. Now, there was one last thing I wanted to know. Percival Q. Jones. Do you know Percival Quentin Jones? I'm afraid not. Who is he? He's also a professor at Oxford, but he teaches criminology. Does he? I've never heard of him. Are you sure? Quite sure. I have close friends at the, at the cri criminology department. As far as I'm aware, there is nobody named Percival Jones teaching criminology at Oxford. That's so weird. Ah, food seems to be ready. I hope you enjoy it. You enjoy a traditional Greek meal with Professor Sanborn. You don't have the heart to tell him that you have no idea what it is you're eating. Thanks for inviting me to dinner, Professor Sanborn. It was my pleasure. Well, I'm going to get back to my bungalow. I have a long day ahead of me this morning. Good night, Mr. Jordan. Away I go. Ben, here you go. Mission accomplished. <coughs> so what's in here? Bar. Like this. My 
friends are both busy with other things tonight. Oh, you mean the red headed American? And the British guy with the silly beard. Yeah, that's, that's him. I'm sure that you have more important things to do. Don't be foolish. Those are two fools who not want to spend time with you. Why don't you come along with me tonight? My friend Ambrose is having a party at the campsite. I don't know. I was sort of planning on just going to there tonight. Come on. You are on vacation. Enjoy it. You know what? You're right. I am on vacation. Okay, lead the way. This is what I like to hear. Let us go. Jealousy. Suffocation this is turning out to be. Let's, uh, let's go to find him. Follow the restaurant. Second, you have the urge to storm into the campsite, find Vegalas and rip his face off, but if you retain your cool inside, you can see. That's not a good idea after all. After all, it's just a one night stand thing anyway. <coughs> Let's go back inside the bungalow. Let's see what her other guess is bungalow. I 
around looking for you yesterday. Some of the villagers told me you were asking about the sea people. You, you were looking for me? So Simon was upset that you hadn't told us? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Well, judging from now how he looked last night, he probably, he's probably over it by now. I hope so. Is there anything else on your mind? Tell about your dream. solve the mystery. Is anything else bothering you? I must confess my jealousy. Well, um, what is it? It's a little embarrassing for me to say. I won't laugh, I promise. No, your laughing isn't what worries me. You can tell me, Ben. Well, it's just that seeing you with the guy last night kind of bothered me. Oh. I mean, I, I think you could do better, you know. I know, Ben. I appreciate your concern. To be honest, I don't even really know why I was with him. I guess I was just overtaken by girliness. He was kind of cute, and I was just plain bored. Is that all that's bugging you? That's all. Okay, if you say so. Ben, you're right. I'm sorry. show you than tell you. Come on. Oh my god, what happened? Good morning, Mr. Jordan. Lovely day for a bit of paranormal investigating, would you say? The drag marks, the sea people. It would appear that this is their work, yes. Are these your friends? Oh yeah, yeah, how rude of them. Al Simon, this is the Professor Sandborn. He wrote the book on paranormal investigating. Literally. Professor Sandborn, these are Alphys, Alice Wilkins, and Simon Booth, my friends and fellow paranormal investigators. Nice to meet you. Pleasure, Professor. Pleasure is all mine. Now then, what do you intend to do regarding this matter? I'm not sure. I found the Sea People's Lair last yesterday, but I haven't been able to have any way of getting underwater. Nobody around here has any diving equipment? Not according to the fisherman who took me around. I guess I'll go talk to him and see if he has any ideas. What about you guys? Feel like uh, coming along for a sail? Though? No, mate. I get seasick very easily. I kind of had this thing about ocean. It's the whole fish thing, you know? I suffer from seasickness as well, I'm afraid. Guess I'm on my own then. Don't be silly, Ben. We're here to help. Yeah, just not what in the balls to say. Okay, then you guys hold the fort here. I'll see what I can do. Right. And on that note. Looks like we couldn't escape. We can't escape this stuff even when we're on vacation, eh, guys? At least we're getting to investigate in places like this. Aye, as far as location goes, you could have done a lot worse. Questions? 
Could I interrupt you guys for a minute? No problem, mate. What's up? Let's see people. Out of curiosity, do we have any idea of what these sea people look like? That's difficult to say. No one has seen them. But based on this evidence, we can assume they are able to breathe both on land and underwater. There's no blood on the sand, so they probably don't have any claws or sharp things on their bodies. They're probably humanoid in appearance. They still sound pretty damn scary to me. Underwater. I'm going to have to go underwater to the sea people's lair. Why not just have a stakeout? Wait for them to come to us. Too uncertain. You won't know for sure when they'll show up again. If I go to them, I, I know for sure I can stop them. How are you going to stay underwater? I'm working on that. Just to get on with what I have was doing. Good luck, Mr. Jordan. Remember, we're here if you need anything. Academic progress. Beach. And we'll take a break. Game is like thank you for watching. We pay to play Ben Jordan Scourge of the Sea People by Francisco Gonzalez. Case number six. Um, we are going to take a little break. We've uh, been able to talk to Professor Sanborn, make peace with Simon, and as well as, um, as well as uh, Alice Wilkins. Would appreciate it if you would like this video, add it to your favorites, leave comments below, share with your friends on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Google Plus, all those social media websites that you use on a daily basis. Subscribe to my gaming channel, Video Gamers Always Play Theater, to get the latest updates. We'll be doing some more videos in the future, so stay tuned for those. We're going to continue our adventure with Ben Jordan, Paranormal Investigator, Case Number Six, Scourge of the Sea People. Uh, I'm your host, Nick Geek. Thanks for watching. Have a great weekend. Till next time. Bye. I'm walking alone. The streets are empty. The only thing I can see is my own silhouette. I'm getting stronger, step by step. The clock is ticking, but there's no time for me.